I really struggle with early extension and all the lessons I've taken. It's it's just I'm not maybe smart enough to do what they tell me to do, but I just couldn't stop it. It was leaving the club face open. So really an important part of understanding early extension. It's two parts here. If the hand path is off, we're going to have to adjust. And how about this? Even disconnection, even if it looks visibly on plane from this angle, if the club gets back there and the hands are behind the body, the body will wait for the hands to catch up by stalling out and standing up as well. So we have this look right here. So we were already in a posture that wasn't conducive to being over the golf ball. It was unrealistic. There was no way we were going to get there from where we were at. And the next big thing is because he had the high hands, the lack of leverage led to a lack of hinge. The minute that that sternum points down towards the golf ball, the hands drop a little bit, butt of the club in the belt buckle. That creates the leverage that's appropriate for you to be able to turn and push away and create that hinge. So what we're doing is the typical Porzak golf move of what happens below the belt, what happens above the belt. We're trying to feel hinge below the belt and a continuous turn to the top, moving our hands in a better direction. We worked on pacing them together and we worked on making sure the hinge was happening at the same pace as the body's turn because the one habit that he has, his hands are quick. And when your hands are quick, the hands elevate to the top of the swing without the body's turn. Oh my gosh. Now, I have been real stiff, to like, stiff like an early tiger. And you said cock the wrist this way and back. But when I take it back, it's, it cocks more. So, so I'm a little confused on the wrist cock. So this is great. This is going to be so good for so many golfers. And I want, you to under, I want everybody to understand, you know, he showed up. And what he was doing because he was coming out of it this way, right? So when you're doing that, the face is going to stay open a lot because yep. you're dependent upon your hands to square it up. Yep. He's sitting there trying to bow his wrist and trying to do this. And as a result of trying to bow it and shut the club face, the club was getting further behind his body. And guess what? That was the reason why it was actually even staying more open. So what we learned was, hey, you should feel like this at this point in the swing. That's the club more in front of you. And believe it or not, even though the wrist seemingly feels more cupped, it's actually a flat wrist, and that's actually the golf club in front of you where you need to be. And then he ended up not hitting any shots right. Show us the old takeaway that you were doing, the takeaway you were trying to accomplish with your lead wrist in order to get the club square. See this right here? And what was happening was when he was actually swinging, you guys, that was, and that it was very dead and getting behind him. What we're trying to get him to understand is more this feeling and then right there. And the funny thing was, as cupped as that feels to you, Dead flat wrist, square. You know, we're 66 years old. I mean, see, that's, and I love that rehearsal right there. Yeah, yeah. And what's, what's cool is, even though his hands are hinging the club more vertical, the hand path is actually flatter. So it's not like he's hinging, and this is what he did on day one. He started hinging like this. And that's why I said, no, 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 we got to pace it with the shoulder. And that's when the hinge started moving in the right direction and the hand pass started moving in the right direction. You guys will see that ball flight. We're not looking for anything starting hard left and then no cuts and big blocks out to the right. And what you're seeing is with that hand path now connected to his body's turn, he's going to be able to hit that little one yard draw. So much confusion with my left shoulder in my golf swing. Yep. You know, whether it's really flat or, you know, you try to, everybody say you bring it under and yet you reverse, you know. You guys, they call it the T-spine. Your spine is right here. There's a perpendicular line that's your shoulder plane, okay? I'm not gonna turn my shoulders on this plane if my spine's here. I'm not gonna turn my shoulders on this plane if the spine's here. I'm gonna turn it perpendicular to my spine. Your spine angle's here. We set you in a spine angle that's here and you're simply turning your shoulders on the plane that they are set up with in your setup. So when you look at this, you know, and there's a big misconception out there as well, and I think, the, I think the, actually the Hogan books, who I'm a huge fan of this, illustrated it incorrectly when they have the line from the top of the golf ball to the shoulders. That's not it. That is not factual. That is not at all correct. When you look at somebody's tilt, okay, that line will always be well above the golf ball. Okay, and it'll be above the ball. If the ball's here, my shoulder plane is up here. Okay, and I'm turning on that plane right there. I'm not gonna turn down towards the golf ball. 
I'm not gonna then sit back and then turn this direction, right? So here's the easy one, guys. If somebody just holds your head and keeps you there, you end up turning in the right direction because all it is is your spine not moving around that gets your shoulders to be where they need to be. The right shot's non-existent right now. Non-existent. Right. Here's why. The club face wants to be matching your spine angle. What I mean by that is this. This is square. My posture, you know, that's how I hit a golf ball. But watch this. If I come out of it, look at that face. There's the open face and the misconception that you needed to bow that wrist in order to do it as well. And that club is getting further behind with you coming out of it. There's the open face. Club behind you, face open. Now, we just have you over the golf ball the right way, which is going to keep the golf club more square throughout your swing, facing the golf ball through impact. One more shoulder question, because Go I'm going to be 2,000 miles away tomorrow. <laughs> so, you know, where does the shoulder end up? Because, you know, all yeah. these lessons, they, they want this shoulder to go to inside of your right foot, you know, and then you're just, like, killing yourself trying to get there. Does that matter that much? Of, check out. So check, like, check. right now, it looks like a good turn to me, but I'm, my shoulder's right here. Right. So, so here's what, the thing. What we is my goal? We talked about Don't that hip tell bump. tell me I'm old and I'm too stiff because <laughs> I'm not old. No, the the shoulder gets underneath and past your chin. Okay. okay, the shoulder gets underneath and past your chin. So it doesn't try to get all the way to the inside left or right foot. You know why it does naturally though? Not the way that you were doing it of this. Okay. Because you bumped that hip, you now have the spine angle that's okay. appropriate to be able to just turn in your spine angle and look where my shoulder will point. It will point towards a line that's on the inside of my right foot. It's not gonna be pointed down at my shoulder because that's gonna be like this. That's not, that's not what we're looking for. We're gonna get it there. Now, here's the big thing. If you were to look on film, you would see ideally this shoulder get underneath and past the chin, but you wouldn't see head movement going this way, or I should say chest movement moving this way to try to get there. It's simply a function of turning around your spine angle. So check this out. I get from instep to instep, you guys, without my head moving. You see that right there? My head's in one spot. And I'm getting my chest here, I'm getting it back here, pressure builds. I'm getting it right there, pressure builds. And that's gonna be cool. It's gonna be a cool topic. I have Todd Soans, my mentor, coming into town in a month, and we're gonna be doing some videos together. And I'm gonna talk about some of those core fundamentals that he taught me at a young age. Yeah, see that's the contact we're looking for. and. Oh, this is, this is the one thing I taught him uh, that I think uh, you probably, that's probably the best thing I taught you all week right there. Oh, yeah. yeah, I told him these new PXGs were just tearing up, and I saw one of those videos where they were, so I started wiping off after every shot, because it's the grime and the sand that tears these faces up. Um, very important, guys, for our golfer out there who's looking to get the most life out of their golf clubs. You guys, we're lucky to have very nice range balls here at the Heights Golf Club, but Listen, in every range bucket, there's always going to be, Chase is over there shaking his head, yep. There's always going to be, you know, this ball here, right? And what's unfortunate about this golf ball is when you have a little bit of, you know, roughness on that, well, if you ha don't hit this with your driver. No use, right? No, don't hit this with your driver. But even these perfect golf balls that are in great shape, which is the majority of the balls here, here's the thing. If you start hitting shots and it's wet in the morning and you're getting a little sand on the face, and you keep hitting that golf ball up against the sanded face, you're just wearing down your golf clubs over and over and over. So, you know, really, really, you know, stick the alignment on the ground, put the wet towel here like he has it, just hanging here. You come over between each shot, you know, wipe it off. It makes a big difference in adding to the life of your golf clubs, you guys, okay? So, that's an important lesson right there and just saving some money as well. Like, what are you doing? Oh, man. That's right where you aimed, by the way. At Forzac Golf, we take a lot of pride in having developed some of the best and most consistent golf swings on the planet. We do this through simplicity. Our Full Swing Masterclass will take you on a step-by-step, easy-to-understand process on how to get your golf swing better than ever. Join the many before you who've utilized our Full Swing Masterclass to take their games to the next level and beyond.